The final appliance that we'll be talking about today is our 3D quad helix appliance. Very similar to the 3D power to action multi action appliance, the quad appliance enables us to do many things that any quad helix would do but still maintaining our fixed advantage that we have with our 3D appliances. Again, most of the actions uh, that we can, or treatment actions that we can provide with the uh, multi action powder, we can as well with the uh, quad appliance. The quad appliance gives us the unique ability to distally rotate the molars much more effectively than what the uh, powder action appliance does. So, this is the big advantage of this particular appliance. So, if you have a case that you want to distally rotate molars and get either unilateral or bilateral expansion of the posterior area, also get some sagittal development in the anterior segments. Really a super appliance. Let's take a quick look at this appliance and this will be our uh, laboratory project. Several things I want to show you with this particular appliance, one of which you should make note of the midline variance. Also you will note the cross bite area back in the uh, primary molar and also the primary cuspid area on the patient's right side. Now after just a few months of treatment that you'll see we're getting some bite opening by the correction of the cross bite over here in this area. Plus with the bite opening you are getting a correction of the midline because of the vertical. And now somewhat later in the treatment after we've completely uh, corrected our Essentially midlines are, are lined up pretty good. We've got some shift of the midline in this direction because of the position of the lateral. But midline position is very good. Also any of the cross bite area problems that we had problems in this area have been totally corrected at this point in time once we're into straight wire. So again the appliance, so the effectiveness of the 3D appliance is shown through here prior to straight wire treatment. Here's a similar situation. Look at the cross bite in this area. And now after quad helix treatment and just beginning into the straight wire treatment, uh, even after many months of treatment you can see the great change in the improvement in the treatment. This shows the positioning of the quad helix again. You see the pressure is on this side. If we have a unilateral cross bite on this side, we want to make sure we get more pressure on that side. If the problem is bilateral, and also see we're getting pressure in this area. The helix can be opened in this area according to your adjustments and get bilateral expansion or we can unilaterally expand the helix. It's an excellent appliance for unilateral control. Probably a little bit easier to control unilateral expansion with this appliance than it is a multi palto action appliance. Now watch the position of the molar with the quad helix treatment. and see how much more the mower is expanded out and also distally rotated. We are selecting the uh, quad helix again for size. You have your model, you take it out of the box and you're going to select for size. Of course now in this particular case they've already been pre-selected at size 3 and we're going to go in and if you'll immediately go to uh, step 4 that will show us not only how to, uh, to expand in the uh, posterior area. See all they're doing is grabbing a hold of the arch and pulling apart. Uh, we're going to look at this about laying it over top. We've actually got the right width. So if you wanted to expand by a couple millimeters then you'd have to grab a hold of the appliance, engage it into the uh, 3D lingual tube, get it in here, and then look at it on the other side and if we have a couple millimeters of expansion that's all we're going for. Don't forget as you're expanding posteriorly you also have to expand anteriorly unless you're just going for molar expansion. If you zoom in here you can see how far we're expanding. In this case we're expanding a couple millimeters. So once you put it back into the slot and you engage it into the slot now we have expansion in these areas of both of the bicuspid areas to put pressure on this bicuspid, this cuspid, we're putting pressure on the molar and in both of the bicuspids and cuspids here. So the only thing we have to do is adapt the anterior bridge segment exactly the same way we did it on the uh, uh, 
multi-action power tool appliance. Same way here. Now we're going to place the uh, the marks again at, at the midline, of course, to uh, uh, to cut it there because we don't need the overlapping of the springs. We normally don't like to do that. It's fairly uncomfortable to the tongue and very very difficult to place. I'm going to double check to make sure if I've cut the anterior segments properly. And again, as I said, it's the same with the uh, multi-action. We're going to go in, place a little mark here on the uh, cuspid area, both sides, because I like my adaptation from there on back. Then I'm going to remove the appliance and make the bends in that area with the uh, flat on round. Again, you're bending against the round end. And we're going to place a bend in it here. And I'm going to grab a hold of it again on this side again. The bend is forward, and don't forget it's down towards the gingiva. Because if you get it up too high, you remember what happens. At this time, you can see we've placed uh, back on the model to double check to make sure what we've done. We've got good adaptation in this area. We're also in this embrasure area uh, right in here. Remember, on the soft tissue, you get some indentations on the soft tissue from these appliances. If not the tongue gets underneath the oven, it's going to flip it out of there. Plus, again, if, if these things rub your fingers over them and make sure if they're going to hit the tongue, you've got to bend them down in a little bit more. That needs to go a little bit more. See, this one, I can't, I can't move this one on the patient's right side. I mean, it's adapted excellently, and we've got pressure here. Again, we activated it this way, so we're going to be expanding all the way around the arch. Except right now, since there's no pressure here, there's not going to be any activation on these three teeth in that area. As we finish up our discussion of these Palato appliances, I really want you to take a, uh, a quick look here at step 9 on page 84. Uh, this is the biggest mistake that I probably see with the appliances that I have done over the years. I just don't get the post bent properly. In other words, I've, I've mentioned this to you earlier, but you've got to make sure that you have buckle root torque. We cannot have buckle crown torque. We are looking for buckle root torque. And yet, if you studied the straight wire appliance extensively, as I have, uh, I know the proper occlusion. I know what's supposed to be when I'm finished. Uh, sometimes I make a mistake here or there, but you've got to be real careful with getting these posts properly aligned with both of these palatal appliances to be able to get the molars in their proper positions. This is a very important concern uh, with both of these palatal appliances that we've discussed here this afternoon on our projects. Just briefly re uh, reviewing again page 85, uh, such as in an earlier page, it, uh, we talked uh, very briefly about what are the actions of these appliances. Uh, again, this is the quad appliance that gives you a great, uh, great ability to rotate these mowers. Uh, there's just no question that this particular appliance is uh, most effective uh, for this particular function, and that's the one that you really are going to be concerned about uh, right here with mo rotating mowers. Um, I think the appliance is not quite as comfortable as what the uh, multi-action powder is, and the patients accept the multi-action powder better. So for most of these functions we're able to perform with the multi-action, I think it would provide you with a little bit more comfort. Uh, but for actual rotation of molars, uh, this particular appliance is far superior. This finishes up our uh, Quad Helix uh, project, and as with all the projects, I really want you to take a moment and uh, reflect back on uh, what you've done with each one of these appliances and how you're going to integrate them into your practice and uh, what you've learned from this uh, workshop project today, uh, projects that we've been able to do and work with you, and we certainly hope that you've got the uh, maximum amount of information possible out of uh, a one-day course. I know it seems like we'd like to spend a little bit more time with you, but uh, you know it's pretty hard to get away and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be able to work with you on these projects. So uh, finish this one up and uh, when you're finished uh, that will end the uh, program for today. Thank you very, very much.